Well, we're out here with the ATV. We've got the little one here. We're gonna be uh, we're gonna be doing some work here. I've got him on the ATV, strapped on here as tight as it can be. Um, we're gonna be taking the trimmer here. We're gonna be trimming some of these briars along this trail just to kind of clean it up, make it look a little bit better. And so when we're driving down this, and we have people on the four wheeler track or whatever, people aren't you know getting snagged on briars and bushes and limbs and so we're going to take the trimmer here real quick i'm going to set up the camera we're going to get this trimmed down and looking better real quick all good and five minutes later we got the whole trail cleared up isn't that right <laughs> and the whole trail cleared Looks much, much better. You can see all the way down, we've got a nice open shot. No briars, no sticks sticking out. So we're gonna get on back to our next location to get to working on that. Okay guys, so we cleared a little bit of a trail over to this location. What I'm actually gonna do is show you a setup that we're going with. And it's, it's kind of crazy to think that you're gonna kill a deer in this particular setup. Just cause, you know, if you're somebody that hunts like very, very rural areas like way out in the middle of nowhere, you never see a neighbor. Therefore, when you're in the woods, you feel like you're in the middle of nowhere all the time. That's not how this property is. There's a lot of people around here. There's a lot of neighbors. There's a lot of uh, houses, not a lot of neighboring properties that are hunters necessarily, but a lot of like, a lot of human activity going on around here on all sides. I mean, it's, it's a busy area compared to most places I've ever hunted. We've got a stand here. We've got a tree right here. It's got a nice small tree with a big canopy, lots of branches coming up behind it. And the stand is gonna be going up this tree facing into the woods, into our property. And there's a lot of brush on this side, a lot of down timber, a lot of tree crowns piled up. Therefore, a lot of deer don't travel behind this tree. They do sometimes, but it's very rare because it's very hard to get through. Now, on the opposite side here, which also, not only are there all those trees, there's a bunch of houses and trailers and stuff along that way. But it creates a nice barrier for the deer, which then pushes the activity to be basically from here all the way forward. And there's a lot of trails coming across here, headed out to that feeding field. And um, let me show you some of the trails here. So there's one right here that actually comes out and goes right next to this tree. And that's the closest one. Come on over here. And then there's one, two, three, four, five. There's a, there's a lot of trails that come through here. Six. There's a really heavy one right there. And it actually splits off into two different trails, but it comes from one. So six. And then there's one more tree over here, seven. In the tree, I don't know if you can see my wife over there somewhere, uh, but there's essentially seven trails that cut through this location within 30 yards that all come out here. And then beyond this 30 yard spot, there's a lot of down timber through here, especially over there, lots of timber piled up. And so again, it creates like another barrier that the deer could go through and could climb around if they wanted to, but it's not super likely. And from last year's experience, we never had any deer climbing through all that stuff anyways. It's just a mess, uh, unless for some reason they were pressured or spooked or whatever, then, they, then they're then they unpredictable. So um, it, we're gonna set up here, should be a great spot. Not a lot of stuff to trim to get a few shots. There's a few natural openings and that should mostly be okay. We're gonna clear a couple more small spots. But other than that, I mean, the spot pretty much gonna be setting the stand going to be good to go and then as long as we have a west wind or not only a west wind a west wind or a north wind we will be able to hunt this spot effectively and have a lot of shot opportunities within 30 yards which is like that like that perfect gap and it'll be it'll, it'll be great so we're going to get this stand set up right now and let me explain to somebody that maybe is not super familiar with deer hunting and stand set setting techniques and stuff like that why there might be somebody asking that's a newer hunter somebody that's not familiar with this type of stuff you know if you've got one two three trails that's really three different trails right here that come out and then you've got four five six seven 
why wouldn't you set your stand on a tree like in the middle so you've got like a 15 yard shot either way instead of setting it over here in this little cluster of trees which is great cover by the way um you know and be 30 yards away from your furthest trail and then it's almost like the trails are like you know 30 28 25 22 20 you know, so on and so forth. Like they just get closer. The reason for that is if you have the stand in between, now you're compromising the location with the wind options that you have. So now if you have a west wind or north wind, let's say in this location, unless you're going to shoot that deer hundred percent, if it's a deer you're gonna pass, that deer's gonna go right past you. And where's it gonna be if you're in the middle? It's gonna be right downwind of you. If you got a west wind or a north wind, and, it, and it's game over if it's a more mature doe or something that you're not going to shoot, let's say, or even a young buck or young doe. They, they catch on pretty quick and um, you, just, you just don't want to do that. I'd rather have to take a 30 yard shot and not spook most of the deer that are going to come through here that I'm not going to be shooting because I've only got either two or three tags. It de depends on what Ohio says for this county next year. And, you know, we usually see 20, 30, 40 deer a hunt. Therefore, there's going to be a lot of deer I'm passing and I don't want to be letting deer pass by with the wind blowing right at their nose and educating deer that I'm not going to be shooting, which is going to be making it really hard to shoot them next year. So that's why we do it. Well, we got the stand set. Here's one of the trails right here that comes out. Nice clear shot to the stand there. There's another trail right here. No shot here, but as soon as I walk down this trail, a couple steps, there's a shot. A couple more steps. And then if we just cut this little tiny sapling here, we'll have another clear shot there. And then I think there's one last shot right over here before they make it out to the field. You can see all the cracks in here. There's one more very slightly quartering away shot right there, which would be perfect as well. And then of course, there's a few more trails that come on down through there, but with just a couple of saplings trimmed down, we'll plenty of shots. And I have a feeling this is gonna be probably one of our better early season spots. And uh, I'm really looking forward to seeing how this turns out because I think it's uh, I think it'll be a lot more productive than we are anticipating based on what we saw last year. I think this spot will be super easy to get to, but not only that, I think it'll be a really productive location. And he's having just a grand old time, isn't he? Sure. Yeah, right now. <laughs> Doing the thing. He just wants force to be with the you. The microphone. <laughs> See. <laughs> He's like, I want the fuzzy bunny tail on it. Yeah, it's not a bunny tail, buddy. It looks like a bunny tail. It's called a wind, what is it called? A, uh, I don't know, wind dampener or something. Keep the wind out of the mic. Yeah, we're gonna get packed up and get out of here. We did get some stuff done though yesterday. We're gonna be getting some new racks for the ATV today, but not racks as in like new ATV racks to go on it, new baskets to go on the racks, but it's gonna be like, nice i think for being able to you know not have to take the wagon out for the days that you don't necessarily need that much storage so the wagon's going to be really nice you know if we're getting firewood out pulling a deer out of the woods if we're taking multiple tree stands and multiple ladders it'll be nice for that you know if we're taking a you know a, a ladder stand it'll be nice because it'll be able to be set in the wagon and you can strap it down and take it out that way but for the most part there's going to be days when i'm just wanting to get out there do some work and take you know the trimmer the saw you know the hinge cutting tool to be able to pull down the trees but not necessarily want to take out the wagon every single time therefore i wanted to have an alternative option for the days that I don't need that much storage because the wagon like it provides a lot of storage but it's a lot of storage so like if you don't need that much for the days that I don't need to pull a wagon around the woods what's a good alternative option when I'm taking stuff out but not as much and I found some ATV baskets made by Guide Gear and I don't know if they're gonna be like a super easy you know 
fit or how they, I don't know how they mount up or what, but you know, the reviews were great. There was a lot of reviews on them and a lot of guys were like, these things are awesome. It made awesome, easy storage on the ATV to be able to, you know, haul chainsaws and chains or straps and, you know, whatever they needed to. And they could easily haul that stuff around without having to, you know, try to bungee cord a bunch of crap to your straps and worry about it falling off or sliding off or whatever. So. We're gonna see how these look. They're supposed to be getting delivered here any moment now. It says that they were out for delivery at like 5 a.m. this morning. It's now close to noon, um, but we'll see. For this kind of stuff, guys, I'm gonna start leaving links in the description below to some of these you know, things that I use day to day. For example, like the wagon, the gorilla cart is what it's called, and mine is rated for 1,600 pounds. I mean, that's a freaking ton. That's like the payload of some pickup trucks back in the day. That was like what they were rated for in the bed, so it's kind of funny, but the Gorilla Car, some of the electric power tools that I'm using, um, the trimmer, the battery powered saw, and I'm gonna leave some of those links to that stuff in the description below. That way, if anybody happens to watch the video and they go, man, I wonder where he got that. I'd like to get one or at least check it out. I'll leave a link below. You can just click the link, go check it out make it easy for everybody you guys can go check out that stuff that I use in case you're interested and uh, help you help me type of situation so definitely check that stuff out here is the rear basket for the ATV the front one says it was delivered but it's not here so uh, I'm hoping it still shows up but um, I've got all the bolts and nuts and washers and everything separated out the pins and the brackets and everything so take this I got the tools that I need ready to go so we're gonna assemble this and I'm gonna show you what I think about it when it's done, I'm gonna tell you what I paid for it just so you guys know whether you think it's worth it for you to pick up something like this for your ATV. If you have one, I think it's gonna come in handy for you know chainsaws, chain straps, um, you know, stuff like that. Just my deer management property work type stuff that I'm always using and always trying to carry around. This is gonna be so much nicer in theory. So let's get it put together and see if it actually is as nice as I'm hoping it's going to be. It actually looks pretty darn good and I was kind of actually nervous once I got it bolted on. I was like, I don't know if this is gonna clear the wagon behind it very well now, but it's actually gonna do totally fine. There's still plenty of room and I even turn the cart back and forth and it clears totally fine. It doesn't hit the wagon. The wagon doesn't really end up underneath of it at all. So it's it's actually about, it's about perfect. So all it is is these bracks that go under the rack and then come up through and bolt down over top. And there was like, two and a half inches of extra bolt on every single one of these. So I ended up grinding them off and smoothing them out. That way there's not like these huge obnoxious, you know, small bolts sticking up that, you know, if you were to fall back and land on them, uh, you know, if Reagan's sitting behind me, she doesn't misplace her hand. We had a bump, you know, stick your hand through with a small bolt or something. Just not, just not a cool idea. So I wanted to ground those off so that the rack is still pretty much flat. Um, and a little safer, but this thing is, I mean, it's, it's, it's freaking on there. It's, it's tough. And the gate on the rear does drop down. It's got these pins, not very, not a very quick system. Um, but for the most part, I'll probably never be dropping it anyway. You just undo these pins, pull it out and then it, and it drops. Not that you really need it for anything that I can think of, at least not that I'm going to use it for, but it does do that. And it sits perfectly with the width of the rack on this four wheeler. You can see the rack comes out to right here and it sits flush right down the side. Same thing on the other side. It sits perfectly flush with the um, factory rack on the ATV and it just hardly touches to the back of the seat so you can still get the seat off for service stuff. But other than that, looks good. And I'm gonna show you what I mostly have in mind for this, which is what I was thinking of when I bought it in the first place. And that is hauling tools. Now, this is not everything that I would take out of the woods, 
but it hauls my trimmer, saw, bag of batteries. If I wanted to throw the, the backpack in here, a pair of boots, if I'm gonna be getting into some nasty stuff, uh, you know, what, whatever it is that I wanna haul in it, it hauls most of the stuff that I would ordinarily take out to the woods for a day of working totally fine. In fact, you could probably throw a deer up on this rack and it would cradle it for the most part in that pretty darn well so that you're not like having it on your ETV like rear rack trying to hang on to it. It's like hanging off, you know, because there's nothing really cradling it. It's, it's a flat rack, you know, so um, lots of uses for it and I think it's going to be a very, very nice add-on to this ATV. And now this rear rack for this ATV, this rear basket was $110. There's a link in the description below if you want to pick this up. It takes about 15 minutes to assemble. It's pretty darn easy. It's very simple, very straightforward, and it should mount onto almost any ATV that has the traditional steel racks on them. Great little item, great add-on for an ATV that you actually use for more than just like trail riding. I mean, even if you did use it for trail riding, it would actually probably be nice to carry some spare fuel, small cooler, whatever else if you're gonna be out for the day. But especially for property managers, people that work in the farm operation, stuff like that, you'd probably have a great use for that thing. For 110 bucks to make your life a little easier, it's definitely worth the money. We're gonna do a little overview on the ATV setup right now. Uh, we've got the Gorilla Cart, we've got the hitch adapter, so we can have a hitch and a hole to use a pin style cart. The hitch is removable, by the way, so it can fit anything else. That's a two inch receiver in there. We do have a new battery on it. I think I mentioned that a little while ago. The first day I got the thing, pig's making all kinds of noise. The first day I got the thing, I go out there and the thing wouldn't start. So I put a new battery in it. Haven't had a single issue with it ever since. Um, we got the racks coated front and rear. And then we have the new rear rack on here. What I think I'm actually gonna do, I don't wanna do like a big rear seat thing, you know, like over top of this rear rack portion right here. But what I think I might do is just get like one of those buddy stand style uh, tree stand seat like cushions, like a nice one that is about this exact width and length. And just get one of those like tree stand seat cushions that Velcro on and set it on here and just Velcro it down through there and attach it that way. That way, you know, if Reagan is on here, you know, and she's sitting on this, you know, these little tiny screw heads aren't causing any kind of discomfort because that would be fun. And just so that, you know, there's no sharp edges you gotta worry about if you are sitting on this, just because it's never fun getting a little surprise cut here and there in your hands from sharp stuff. And this will actually work as almost like small handles here. It'll actually be kind of kind of nice for that as well. I mean, it'll be, uh, it'll be usable for sure. And of course, if you guys enjoy the mix up and content between the outdoor stuff, the ATV stuff, the truck stuff, the only reason I haven't been doing more of the truck stuff in the last, video here is because the dually is still at the paint booth we're going to pick it up you'll see that in our next video possibly and not only that but the first gen is now gone so we've got rosine here but i'm not taking this sub box up to get leather wrapped which is our current project on that truck until they get the dually back because the seat leather is ready for that as well. So as soon as I get the dually back, it's gonna be going straight up there and it's got brand new paint on it. And then it's gonna be getting brand new jet black leather interior. It's gonna be so sick. Anyways, if you wanna enter to win that truck, link is in the description. Just go to lmpgear.com. You could buy a super cool coat like this. You could buy a hoodie like one of these. You could buy a hat like this. You can't buy Crocs like these though. These are we don't offer Crocs, unfortunately, but uh, you can go buy anything you see on the site that you do like, and as soon as you check out, you're automatically entered to win the five-speed Dually Sport plus $5,000 cash, which, by the way, that giveaway ends on May 3rd, which, you know, that's like 17 days left, so don't waste much time. That giveaway is winding down, and one of you are gonna have to take home that truck. Might as well be you. Thank you guys so much. We'll catch you in the next video. Peace.